Hey, hey, everyone. Happy Friday. Um, I My name is Colleen Sullivan, if we have not met, and I conduct this group every single month. We have a monthly call. It's here for you. It's a safe space that you can come in as a parent, caretaker, mom, dad, individual, um, just wanting to, you know, to have more support um, regarding your kiddo, um, whether they have ADHD, anxiety, stress, um, just feeling off. Um, we, we all have mental health and we can all use support. Um, so my name is Colleen Sullivan. I'm a mom of two grown children. My oldest, um, who is now 25 was diagnosed with ADHD at six and he struggled, struggled, struggled. Let me tell you, he struggled all through his school years. And as a mom, as a parent, it broke my heart to see him struggle for so long, not only with his ADHD symptoms, but the side effects from the medications we were trying. We, you know, we were given one solution. We kind of went through them all and they all had side effects. So I knew it was not a long-term solution for him. And I know other parents out there are um, maybe on the same page. Um, and this is what this group is for. So you don't feel that you are on this journey alone. When I was going through this, trying to find solutions for my son, I felt alone, isolated, often hopeless, um, frustrated. I mean, the gamut of emotions as a parent, um, it's stressful, it's overwhelming, it's daunting. Um, and I just wanna make sure no other families are on this journey on their own. And today I have a special guest, my dear, dear friend, Melissa Bloom. Hey, Melissa. Hi. <laughs> so I, I wanted to, um, I, this group is here for you um, to come in, ask questions, share pain points, what you're struggling with, what's working, what's not. And for us to work as a group, collaborative group to work towards solutions, because I really feel that it's one thing talking about the issues, the struggles, what we're going through, but it's another thing moving the needle and moving forward and finding solutions that we can all feel good. Um, and Melissa and I, we go way back to our yoga teaching days, yeah. Wayne, Pennsylvania, where we met um, at our dear friend, Kara Bradley studio. And, um, and then our friendship just evolved from there as we were both trying to help our kids, right? Mm -hmm. One day we were having a conversation. I remember this, Melissa, and I was sharing what I thought I found for my son as kind of like, we always say the missing link, um, something that we were just learning more about and your eyes just lit up and you're like, tell me more because I think I can use this for, for my kiddo. Um, yeah. And that's what we do. We share our stories so they can help someone else. So um, I brought Melissa on because she is such a, um, just a wealth of knowledge when it comes to the science and what we're learning. The science is just bringing us in a new direction that can really help yeah. someone feel better, perform better. And she is, she's coaching people. She's an energy teacher. She's a brain, gut brain guru. And <laughs> she has such great background, but she also has a personal experience with this. And she just feels so passionate about helping others sharing, just like I do, sharing her knowledge. And um, she recently wrote this book called The Path to Joy. And you can see, I have all these of all these little tabs. And I'm this, matching the book today. Oh, yeah, you are. You are. So it's called The Path to Joy. And um, I brought her on just to share a little bit more about what's in this book, how it can help, and then also share a little bit about her journey with her son, um, because that's that's why we're here. We're here to help other families with their kiddos. Um, so Melissa, of course, I have all these pages. Um, <laughs> you know, earmarked. And the first one that I come to is the second brain. Well, first yeah. of all, let's, let's just tell, share a little bit of something that I might've missed about who you are and how we met and your, well, I, your I cliff notes. That, so I think you got, um, you gave a nice description of who I am. And of course, 
like most of us, I hate talking about myself. So that's like, <laughs> let's, let's deflect and talk about something else. Um, but I think what we're all, anyone who listens to this, what we share is we all have kids who either have struggled or are struggling. Um, and I've been in that boat and, ha you know, I went through an experience that I'll share with my son, but what I remember from that time feeling is, um, there comes a point where things get really bad and it's almost like it's almost like the world stops, right? And your mission is clear, like, okay, all of this other stuff is fading away and I have one job and it's, you know, to either help or save or support my child. Like it becomes very clear. Um, and that's kind of where I was a few years ago with my son, Benjamin, um, and that's really when you and I started talking more. So Benjamin, it's so interesting because as a teenager, he's 15 now. So he was 12 at the time. As a teenager now, he's like the easiest going teenager. I mean, it's a little scary. Like he wants to spend time with me. He hangs out, plays the guitar. Like he's just so laid back and easygoing. And back his childhood, if I could describe it in one word or a phrase, it was walking on eggshells. That's what 12 years was walking on eggshells, right? Not knowing if he was going to erupt with anger or frustration in tears. So we always had this dynamic and I have twins who are three years younger than him. So it felt like the whole house was like tiptoeing around, not wanting to set off the bear. Um, and there was, you know, I know this group is geared more towards ADHD. There were some focus issues for him, for sure. And I think the way we saw that was, is in anxiety, right? So sometimes you can't pinpoint what exactly is going on, but it was his anxiety around schoolwork and not being able to do assignments that kind of clued us in that this is a really intelligent child who cannot sit and do anything. He can't do his work. So we started to notice that this was like his sixth grade year of school. Um, ironically, that was the year of COVID too. So it just, we, we started the year rough and then it ended for the whole world rougher, <laughs> right? but and the other kids too. Right. But it was so rough coming into that year. And then I remember this point where at my grandmother's hundredth birthday party in Florida, and we had taken Ben out of school and he could not do the work that was assigned to him because they had given him some assignments to, you know, stay up to date on. He could not do it. And he was just spiraling. And one afternoon when we're down in Florida, he comes into the room we were staying in and says, I think I'm going to kill myself. Mm -hmm. And he wasn't saying it in a dramatic way. He was saying it in a very like, I don't, I don't think I can keep doing this. Um, so that was, you know, a moment it's, you know, how you remember like certain moments in time, you remember, like, I remember what I was wearing and I remember, you know, where we were exactly. And I just remember the moment so clearly. And it was so clear, like, okay, all right. I have one job. I have one job. This is my job. This is what I need to do now is yeah. figure this out and fix this. Yeah. Um, so that's when it just so happened we were talking. I mean, it was really, I don't believe in coincidences. So it was meant to be that we were talking and we started talking about the gut brain axis, which at the time, you know, several years ago, nobody was talking about. Yeah. Now there's a lot more conversation around the power of our microbiome and our gut, but then not a whole lot of conversation. No. Um, and I didn't, when, when I was talking to you, Melissa, I didn't understand what I was talking about. It was so right. new. 
but I, but I did know there is something to this. There is yeah. something to this. I did not hesitate to start aiming on the, yeah. on the solutions and neither did yeah. you. Because I know. And that was the interesting thing. Cause I think I, I often do a lot of research and hesitate and kind of like, I'm always trying to understand everything. But at that moment, I, I didn't have the time. I was like, you know what? I'm willing to try anything at this point. Um, and, and it was really an answer to a prayer. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, same for us. Um, and I know it was for you because I've seen Benjamin just evolve and oh my gosh, he's just right. And easy when going and happy and light. I mean, it's a whole different person. And when we can change the path for a kid, especially right for our kids, when we can change the path forward so they don't have to struggle. It's, it's like, you know, we use these cliche words, game changing, transformational, but it is, it is. And I think one of the, you know, we both understand that some, there is a time and a place for medication. And we certainly, I never want anyone to feel any shame around using medication with your kids or with yourself, because you have to do what you have to do. And we're so, we're all so desperate to help our families. Um, but what I, we had tried some medication previously and it was a little tricky because he's so thin. We had to be careful about weight, but what was so interesting when you kind of address the root cause and the root of the problem you're not addressing just focus or just anxiety or just depression. Um, you're really shifting the whole kit and caboodle, right? And so, so everything shifts and falls into place. So really we took a kid that had so much going on and just, we had to tiptoe around and it wasn't like one thing was better. It was, everything was different. That's right. And I often talk about in this group, um, the natural approach um, doesn't just target one symptom and one, what we call neurotransmitter, right? right. We're, we're creating a holistic coordinated balance of these feel good chemicals. Yeah. So we can feel better on different levels, like focus, yeah. mood, emotional balance, motivation, energy, sleep. I mean, it's all what you say connected. Yeah. We're not yeah. just spare parts, right? It's all connected. That's right. And, um, and I also say how we feel and perform is not just up in our head. It starts in the gut. It's travel, you know, it transports across what we call the access, um, yeah. to the brain. And, um, and let's just talk about why these parts are just so interconnected. You talk about the vagus nerve in your book. You talk about immune system, the gut microbiome, our second brain. Let's just yeah. talk about, you know, how you kind of address the science piece of this. So people can just have a and different viewpoint. Right. And there's lots of, there's lots of conversations to be had here, but what's become clear over time is that most of our chemicals that kind of help us understand the world and handle stress, resilience, are not actually made in our brain, right? They signal up to our brain, but they're not actually produced there. So then we, then the question becomes, where are they produced? And over hundreds and hundreds of papers and scientific research, we, we come to understand that most of them, the majority are produced or the precursors are produced in our gut. And so what does that even mean? What is our gut, right? So it used to be that we thought our gut was like this hollow tube, like food goes in, some things happen and then food and then stuff comes out, right? But what's wild is that there's this massive ecosystem within our gut that actually is responsible for almost every part of our life, right? It's this ecosystem, our gut microbiome, is not just about the gut. It's really this master puppeteer in our body. 
So if you wonder what is controlling how you feel, how you think, how you see the world, right? How you interact with other people, all of that, which we think of as brain or heart is really begins in the gut um, with these microbes, right? These are single celled organisms that over time, right? Since we walked the earth, we had a microbiome. We were never without them. They've been our constant companion, right? And so the makeup of them has evolved over time. And some of that is good. Some of, a lot of that is not so good because of environmental factors. Um, but we've always had this microbiome and it's only now that we're appreciating what, what it's doing for us, right? It's serving us so much. Um, and so these chemicals, there are ways for us to optimize our microbiome, support it so that we get more of the chemicals that we want, right? In a, in a balanced way. But then there's, we talk about this axis, right? They call it the gut brain axis. So even if you have the chemicals, we have to get them up here. Mm -hmm. And that's where we talk about our immune system is part of that communication pathway, our endocrine system, our hormones, and then a big player is our vagus nerve. Um, and our vagus nerve, it sounds, you know, esoteric or something, but it's really just this pretty long nerve that comes from our brain stem, wanders around the back of our throat, which is important because that's a way for us to activate it. Um, around our heart and then our lungs and ends around our, my, our, really wraps all the way around our gut and our intestines. Um, and that's a major super highway. And information goes back and forth in both directions. And uh, they found about 80% of the information is going from your gut north to your brain. Yeah. Yeah. That's why, you know, it's so important when I started learning about this of modulating and keep repopulating the microbiome with beneficial strains of bacteria, prebiotic fibers. We I talk about this a lot in this group um, about how we can, the need for it because our microbiome is changing and you, you talk about this probably more eloquently than I can. Yeah. Um, our microbiome is changing all the time and it's influenced all the time. And a lot of it is negative influence, right? Stress, environment, our nutrient depletion in our food. So we need to kind of maintain this balance right. uh, of good beneficial bacteria. And I think that what you bring up is an interesting point. It is changing all the time and it changes as we age, right? It's going to shift because what we need in terms of neurotransmitters and neurochemicals and stuff is going to change. Our needs change over time. So our microbiome changes over time, but a key facet to what's impacting our microbiome, it's not just what we might think of, right? Like we think, oh, well, if I eat healthy food or I exercise, right, that's got to be good, which it is. But there's so many factors. Um, and stress is a big one, as is, you know, how we talk to ourselves, how we handle stress, how we perceive the world, all of that blame, shame, guilt, and so that's why it's this very interesting dynamic because, you know, one of the guys, Colleen and I both love Dr. Sean Talbot, who actually created some of the products or all of the products that we're talking about. Um, he had this fascinating study with a plate of cookies. Do you remember that, Colleen? And he talks about one of the things that happens when we say, okay, especially as women, I'm not going to have that plate of cookies. I'm not doing it. I shouldn't do it. I know it's not good for me. I, I know I'm, I might gain weight if I eat that cookie. What happens is we actually release more cortisol, more stress hormones than if we had just eaten the cookie, Add the cookie. right? So there's this balance here of not just deprivation and and like, controlling, you know, movement and food and nutrition, 
there's also this, like, how do we find some ease and, you know, are less punitive and less harsh with ourselves, um, all matter. And so that matters for us, but also for our kids, how do we set them up with, you know, positive affirmations and self-talk so that they feel good about themselves. And I think that plays a lot into our struggling kids with anxiety, depression, ADHD, because a lot of the feedback that they get from teachers or even peers is why can't you do this? Why can't you focus? You're always struggling. You, you can never get this done on time. Why? And that plays over and over and over again and also impacts the makeup of their gut microbiome. Absolutely. It's like this, it's like a circular, like, and, and often it's like, what comes first, you know, cause a lot of times that thought process is from stress. So if we can release, reduce the stress, and then we're not having those thoughts, it can have this like, I don't know, circular yeah. impact on our microbiome and how we feel, how we perform. Um, because I know for a fact that um, and I know a lot of moms out there, they feel that overwhelmed. They feel that worry, you know, we all do. And, um, and that impacts our physical health and our mental health. And I know for a fact, when I started on the protocol myself at the same time, my son did I just felt this weight come off my shoulders from this, from the supplements. And that kind of put things in motion right. and just started getting things more balanced, right? You know, less stress, less worry, less of those thoughts, um, less of that blame, shame, should have, would have, could have yeah, going on. Yeah, I know it, it's, it's complex, but, but the simple answer is if we feed ourselves with positive words, mm -hmm. thoughts, food, sun, sleep, right? If we feed ourselves with everything that's good and are gentle and give ourselves grace, and we can teach our kids to do the same physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, right? That that's where this major shift happens. The shift begins with the physical, but it doesn't end there. Absolutely. You bring up a, such a great point. I want to share a quick little story of my own, exactly what we're talking about. Um, my daughter, who was just grad recently graduated from college, she was going through kind of her final stuff at school. And it yeah. was just a kind of a horrendous week of stress, right, for her. And she is at least verbal about it. You know, like Ben was verbal with you, yeah. which is really helpful. She calls me up, says, Mom, I don't know how I'm going to get through this week. I'm stressed. I can't sleep. Da, da, da. You know, it, and she's on the supplements. She takes really good care of her health and all that. But sometimes the stress is just heightened sure. a season of stress, right? We all, we all go through it. Our kids go through it. And I, I did some breathing work with her. This is where it's just more than just this. It's a holistic approach. I did some breathing work with her. I told her to go outside, move your body a little bit, take a 10 minute break. And, um, and then she's like, mom, and I also have a plan. I, you know, I have, you know, four classes on Monday. This project is just really, that's due Monday night is the one that's really causing me all this stress. And I think I can email my professors and say, um, I can't come to class that day. I need, a, you know, a health day, I'm not feeling well. And just take more time to complete this project. And I think I'll be okay. And I said, well, Chloe, there you go. Like, your professors know you, you're a hard worker, you don't miss class, but I want you to do me, I want you to tell me you're going to do this without any shame or guilt. Mm -hmm. And we were on FaceTime talking. She burst into tears because we all have that shame, that guilt that is associated with like, it's okay to take care of ourselves. It's yeah. okay to take a step back and say, I can't do it all. Um, it's okay to, you know, not be okay. And it was just a message to me and to share with other parents that, you know, our kids need that permission to take care of themselves. And, um, and she got, you know, the work done and yeah. you know, it all worked out, but yeah. 
she was feeling that pressure of yeah. having to do it all. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you taught, you mentioned, um, sleep and I want to cover this on this call because sleep is so important for our brain health. And if we're not getting good night's sleep, and I don't care if you tell me you sleep six hours a night, it, it could not be, you know, the good quality of sleep that we right. need for our brain health. So kind of what goes behind the scenes when it comes to sleep? What should we be? I mean, I know I prioritize sleep like I used to not. Yeah. Um, my daughter in college that I just talked about, she prioritizes sleep. Her friends kind of, you know, chuckle a little bit when she says 10, 10 o'clock lights out. Right. Um, she's like a sleep Nazi. Right. <laughs> Which she's learning early. Right. But um, give, give us your, you know, story about sleep and why it's important and what we can do. And yeah. So sleep is pretty much the most important thing, like as physical intervention, like nuts and bolts kind of stuff goes if you said, is it, you know, nutrition or movement or water, I would say sleep is probably the kingpin. Um, I actually rec I have a podcast episode about only about sleep. Um, and so here's, here's the short on sleep, especially for kids who are struggling with any of the things we talked about right? ADHD, anxiety, depression. One of the things that we want less of, and I, and this has become more well-known over the last few years, especially with the brain fog associated with COVID is we want less inflammation in our brain, right? That brain fog, that confusion, that cloudiness, um, sometimes it even masks as fatigue is because of too much noise in the brain. And by noise, I mean too many characters that should not be there, right? So our immune system mounts an attack when we have a whole host of characters that shouldn't be around, right? So, you know, if, if your brain has a bunch of like inflammation and all this noise, then your signaling is slow and inaccurate. And so you're foggy, you can't focus, um, you're more anxious, you're overwhelmed, right? You, you feel almost set back from the world, like you're not present or an active player in your life. And that's part of that is just noise in our brain. So we can address that by helping support our immune system with our gut, but we can also address it through sleep. And the best way to address it is sleep. Um, we call sleep a car wash for the brain, right? And what happens at night um, when we're sleeping is um, cells in our brain actually contract and get smaller. And what that allows for is a cerebral spinal fluid in our brain to kind of move around and collect debris, right? Kind of like trash collection. So if we're not sleeping, there's not, the trash collection isn't happening. And that trash collection has a name. It's called the lymphatic system. And I think most of us have heard of our lymphatic system, which is our kind of waste drainage system. So this lymphatic system that happens in the brain merges into our lymphatic system. They're connected and, and toxins drain out. So sleep is where it happens. It doesn't happen if you're not getting good sleep. Um, so tips for getting good sleep. Well, we talk about our gut getting, you know, more serotonin, right? Building up our serotonin, which makes us happier. Our GABA, which makes us feel content. That all plays a role at nighttime in sleep. Um, helping control our cortisol level, level, serotonin and GABA do that, but you know, controlling our stress levels in many different ways through self-talk, through meditation, through movement, through sunlight, being outside, right? 
being in nature, all of that plays a role in controlling our stress. Um, and cortisol is kind of our nightly friend that wakes us up in the middle of the night um, and prevents some of this drainage, this toxin, you know, disposal system at night. Um, so cold room tends to help. There are certain foods. I know Colleen, you have like this great list of foods that actually help have more uh, melatonin or magnesium and can help with sleep at night. Um, so there's a number of different things we can do to help our sleep, but it is the kingpin. Yeah. Yeah. When I learned one four nights sleep impacts your brain functioning for four days, I was like, whoa, I need to, because I was not always prioritizing my sleep. You know, I would yeah. be up, you know, working to the wee hours. Um, that's when my brain just kind of woke up. So I had to really do a, a hard reset of my circadian rhythm, um, yeah. going to bed on time, you know, preferably before, you know, around 11 for me. Um, and just, you know, now I'm kind of on a, a really good rhythm, you know, of just going to bed at the same time, waking up at the same time, yeah. getting good quality sleep, waking. If you are not waking up feeling rested, you know, if you're waking up feeling your mind's already racing and you're feeling exhausted that you're not probably getting a good night's sleep. Right. 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 Yeah. And there's things to do, things we can do for ourselves as parents. There's things we can do for our kids um, with these lifestyle habits and with the supplementation that can really help. Cause I know, you know, ADHD and sleep issues kind of go hand in hand. Yeah. And it's a late onset of melatonin. I kind of researched it for a while because my son was going through a lot of sleep issues and, um, and, uh, you know, not to bring in medications, but a lot of times the medications were kind of um, impacting his sleep as well. So, yeah, well, the, you know, medications taken late in the day, what, you know, sometimes that causes the cells to actually expand, right? And we need the opposite to happen at night. We need a contraction so that this kind of waste removal system can, can do its thing. Um, and so, so, it, you know, it, it's just, it is a balance and it's saying we can't do everything. We can't, there's, there's no perfect, you know, plan for anybody, but it's, we can try a few new things, incorporate some new habits, maybe a new supplement and see how that works. Yeah. Yeah. I talk about our sleep supplement. I talk about, um, the supplements that lower cortisol, which is, you know, the kids fundamentals, it looks kind of like this, the kid's mood lowers yeah. cortisol, increases serotonin. Um, I know some kids started taking a little pixie stick. Um, it's just a little pixie stick at night and it just calms them enough to kind of go off, off to sleep. Cause I know a lot of kids use it for homework and schoolwork, but this can be a nice tool at night as well. Yeah. Yeah. So awesome. Um, I'm trying to think if there was anything else that you wanted to talk about. Um, I'm actually going to add this. I have um, a list of books that I recommend people. If they want to know more about the gut brain connection. I mean, this has been my kind of Bible. Yeah, it's the Bible. Right. The mind gut connection by Dr. Emron Mayer. He actually sits on the scientific advisory board of the um, company that formulates these supplements that both our kids are on that have helped. Um, I also like this book. Mm -hmm. This is Your Brain on Food by Dr. Uma Naidu. I mean, it just talks about foods that, and I highlight this a lot with my clients, just nutrition, um, but often we can't get what we need from just nutrition alone, but it's important. It's yeah. still important, guys. Yeah. Um, you know, foods that we can boost foods that we should limit and avoid that really kind of exasperate depression, ADHD, anxiety, PTSD. So this is a great yeah. book and I'm going to add Melissa's book to my Yay! list. Um, so I have in my links on social media, I have re my recommended reads and it's called the path to joy. And, you know, she goes over a lot of the science around what we're talking here about um, the gut brain connection, how our gut is the master conductor, leaky brain, you know, that's the, you know, the whole inflammation. And we didn't really talk about leaky brain. If you want to talk a little bit about that, I mean, it has to do with the inflammation in the brain and the blood brain barrier. Um, 
Right. And that's, that's, you know, as some people have heard of leaky gut, right, where the lining of our gut becomes more permeable. And so more kind of, I call it a bad cast of characters enters our bloodstream and, and kind of creates an immune response. Um, so especially like if you have allergies, food allergies, there's a good chance that there, there's some training in your immune system that's not happening, but also that there's a leaky gut issue because mm -hmm. there's a whole lot of stuff that's getting into your bloodstream that really your gut should be taking care of. Um, so the same is happening in our brain. We have this, you know, pretty solid impermeable blood brain barrier that is very picky and choosy about who's allowed in, right? Like doesn't allow a lot of, a lot of folks in because we want to keep it quiet and calm and, you know, like easy to handle up there. Um, but when that blood brain barrier gets permeable, that's where we get a lot of inflammation. And again, inflammation is just a lot of noise. And so it makes it hard for, for neurotransmitters to get where they need to go efficiently and accurately. So if you think about it, it's a slower response and an inaccurate response. And that means you're foggier, you're slower, and you're also not getting, say, the serotonin or the GABA where you want it to go. And so even if you were producing enough, it's going to the wrong house. Um, mm -hmm. And so we're not getting the effect of our, you know, neurochemicals. I love all your analogies. <laughs> So they're mis being misfired. They're not going they're being to be misfired, right? right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, awesome. So guys, I hope this conversation was valuable. You know, the purpose of this group is to support other families, other parents, other kiddos, and to really educate and add value. So you can learn this information. It's really, that's why I call it the Empowered ADHD Group. It's really empowerment. And it's really my battle cry out to other parents to empower you to, if something doesn't feel right and you're trying to help your kiddo and nothing's working, or you've tried this and, and you need support, this is what this group is all about. And um, I thank you, Melissa, for coming on and sharing your wealth oh. of knowledge, your experience. Um, and guys, I'm going to, I'm going to include Melissa's information in the, when I send out the recording. So if anything that she's talking about speaks to you or you want more information about her, her recent book, which is a great wealth of knowledge, it's an easy read. Um, it can apply more than just for your kiddos with ADHD. It's it's a life tool. I Thank look at you. It. Path to joy. Who doesn't want- Right, who doesn't want joy? more joy? <laughs> <laughs> and if you want any more information about the supplementation that I talk about and that I share, we both share actually, because it's helped- um, yeah, families, um, just let us know, drop us a message, um, email us back and, um, thank you so much, Melissa. This yeah, has been fun. I always, thank you. I always Thanks love talking me. to you. Have a great day, everyone. And we will talk soon. Let us know if you have any questions at all. Bye everybody.